Hey folks, your OS Reviews, you're watching our video review of the Pogo Connect first generation Bluetooth smart pen. This is a pressure sensitive pen that will benefit users of slightly older iPads, perhaps not the iPad Pro, which already has the pencil. But if you want to add pressure sensitivity into your day-to-day uh, -day life with perhaps doing a bit of work when on the go using your iPad, this is definitely one of the few options that you find on the market that is fairly attractive in terms of its design, as well as supports a wide range of applications to the the iOS App Store. Otherwise, here in 2017, this first-gen model is dramatically lowered in terms of price. You can find it for sub-$15, which is very cheap for an all-aluminum pen that feels extremely sturdy and premium in the hand. Now, there are a few downsides to the Pogo Connect Smart Pen, the first as well as the second and third generation models. It always uses this uh, slightly rubbery tip. It's not extremely um, precise, so if you compare it to, let's say, a Wacom-based pen or tablet, as well as some other tablets, perhaps such as the Dart tablet, uh, stylus, it's not going to give you that same level of precision. So if you are really used to uh, a super light strokes registering perfectly onto a tablet when you're drawing, this does require you to apply a bit more force. And technically, even though it has hundreds of levels of pressure sensitivity, it still has that pressure sensitivity built directly into the tip here. So that really depends on you to press against the surface of your tablet. So that's going to be the glass display in order to exert that force. It's not going to happen naturally. It's not using um, electromagnetics. So it does require you to actually apply more physical force. So um, um, that's something to quickly keep in mind. Taking a quick look at the design at the Pogo Connect first, again, it is a very beautiful piece of hardware. It reminds us a lot of other older um, you know, Macs as well as the current line of Apple products with its colored scheme as well as its all aluminum build. Again, it feels very premium and there's also a hardware key here that uh, does a few things in various applications. It might bring up a quick launch shortcut. It might also act as the erase key that erases your drawings. So it's uh, pretty easy to use. Now in applications where this does act as the eraser button, it's a little bit too easy to hold to accidentally hit when you are holding the uh, pen in your grip. So that's something to quickly keep note of. Um, but otherwise, the, the end here features just a strap for removing the one AAA battery, which the Pogo Connect uses, and it lasts you roughly uh, one year before you need to replace it again. The tip, which is again made out of this rubber material, is actually pretty good in terms of uh, sliding around on a glass surface. It does feel pretty premium, even though it covers up a slightly larger surface area again than, let's say, a Wacom-enabled precision precision based tip. Uh, with that being said, once this part wears down, you can definitely replace it. You just simply unscrew it and the company also sells replacement tips in a number of different sets and designs from a more brush like tip that it's a longer like a paintbrush and to um, simply these tips again, you can find them in packs of two for around $20 each. So depending on your needs, you can also load up on other accessories that, that uh, one by 10 design also sells through their website. So in addition to being the quick launch key, there's also a small LED uh, hidden behind the surface of this of this control here, and uh, it will light up and correspond to a few different modes when you're first setting up this pen. So when you are pairing it to Bluetooth for the first time, you tap on it once and it's going to light up blue and flash for about two minutes or so so that you know uh, it's on when it's trying to pair to your iPhone or to your iPad. Afterwards, what's interesting is it also acts as a color mapping LED, which I'll show you in a moment when I open up a corresponding application. But if I tap on purple or blue or cyan or black, depending on the color that I'm selecting on, the LED will glow the same color so that you can really easily glance and know what color you're painting or drawing with, which is an extremely cool feature in my opinion. Otherwise, the pen itself also doesn't really easily, uh, doesn't really roll around too much just because this uh, button here stops it from rolling off a table, which is nice in terms of its design. Overall, it's very easy to grip and comfortable to hold even for longer extended periods of use. So next, let's take a quick look at the companion application if you are setting up with an older iPad, let's say the first or second generation model. If you have the current current third or let's say fourth generation iPad, it's extremely easy. Just download any supported um, application from the app store that has a pressure sensitivity for, for styluses. And then you just iOS is uh, sorted and categorized so that if you have a mobile product like a touch or a phone, it's only going to allow you to download those specific apps, which is a good thing since all you need to do is search Pogo Connect. And the first app that will pop up is Pogo Bridge. And that's the companion app that you need to download first and open that up. So this is a pretty 
simple interface that tells you welcome to Pogo Bridge, use this application to connect your iPad 1 or 2, supports iPhone 4 as and above for mobile devices. And then afterwards, uh, what happens here is basically you bridge the pen by tapping on the power key again, turning on Bluetooth on your uh, mobile device, and then afterwards, basically your iPhone or iPod Touch will connect with this smart pen first. Afterwards, you need to go you know, into the app store of your tablet and download the Pogo Connect application uh, once more. So you can see here it's been disconnected here. And uh, you install that application and also go into the welcome screen. And uh, then you tap on the connection key here once. So it's going to connect to the, uh, you know, the, the pen itself is going to connect to my mobile product first. And afterwards, my phone is going to connect to the iPad. And that process itself is actually a lot more seamless than I expected. I thought this whole this connected this, this connected this would uh, make the experience bulky, it would make it slow and unresponsive, but actually worked fairly well. Setting up for the first time only took a minute or two, so it's not too complicated either. The only real, real concern is that it requires you to also bring your phone with you, and since it's a companion app that you have to the, the tethering has to be on at all times, it's going to drain your phone's or iPod Touch's battery life faster. So um, the display has to be on at all times to prevent it going to sleep and then Bluetooth disconnecting, and that would be bad. So the app will remain on. So everything has been connected. You can see the bridging is complete. And to test this, I can just tap on here once to see you know if everything is set up. You can see that the blue LED icon lights up correspondingly, so we know that everything is correct. And the same thing goes on with the welcome screen. It says that the pen is now connected. You can look at the user guide here that tells you how to replace batteries and parts in addition to open up compatible apps from here, but uh, everything else is pretty straightforward. There is a configuration screen that you can use to do a quick demo and test of the pen's functionality. You can see that indeed pressure sensitivity, sensitivity does work so that if you press really hard you can see that it does exert uh, more force and creates a thicker stroke and a darker stroke at that uh, versus a very light stroke when you write very lightly. If I want to erase everything I've written, I simply tap again on this uh, erase button here, the multifunction key dubs as the eraser in this default app and everything goes away. And on the right hand edge of this application, I have a color wheel where I can change the color. If you look closely again to the LED, that uh, changes you know, depending on what I'm clicking on. If I'm clicking on blue, the LED color will be blue. If it's uh, pink, it's going to be pink. Same thing with green. So it does match the color of you know whatever it is that you're tapping on pretty well. It's not showing up too well on, on camera, but it's actually a very responsive and uh, pretty interesting experience of really changing the color and seeing the color also change with this uh, physical LED here. So for instance, if I tap on green here and want to really draw something quickly, you can see that green is being shown. It's going to you know, stop displaying that light after a few seconds just to save on battery. I can change then to, let's say, pink, to then blue, so that everything is very responsive and easy to use. It also uh, will recognize you know, multiple tilted pen angles and degrees in a sense, so that if you're at a more slanted angle, it's going to also draw a thicker stroke. So you can also change and adjust the pressure and also how much each uh, tilted angle you know, corresponds to through the program menu on the very top here, but this is just meant as a quick demo app uh, to get you started with, and this also shows you the various pen tip profiles, some of them which do not come included, such as, again, the aforementioned paintbrush tip that you have to purchase separately. When you're done, again, I can erase this. So it does make for a pretty compelling and easy to use um, software package, surprisingly nicely designed, uh, but the real concern is just the sensitivity is not being as precise as a Wacom tablet or a Wacom pen if you're used to that. So if I do a quick little drawing test here, and if I draw something like a, a door perhaps, if I'm doing a sketch, let's say if a house, a very rough sketch at that, and I sketch this out, do a bit more, some of the concerns, uh, or at least some of the most more minor cons that I have, uh, would be that you can some of the points, um, you know, the edges that I want to start directly on this edge here is not going to be as precise because uh, part of the screen is uh, obstructed and covered up by this pretty thick rubber tip. It's not as small as a fine point tip, so that's again something that can lead to a bit more issues and you have to erase a bit more content. But overall, really, it's not bad and it does work uh, pretty well for, for what it's worth. The Ping My page uh, 
app here tells you how far away you are from your pen. Now the setup and the way that it works is actually not as precise since we have a companion or a bridge app set up, um, but it uses Bluetooth to locate the distance you are from the tablet and the pen so that you don't lose it. Although there isn't a built-in speaker on the pen itself, so you don't really know it doesn't actually ring, but at least you can see it's flashing and see a relative distance of how far away it is in this radar system, and then you know tell you if you've disconnected by continuously blinking, for instance, and setting that up over here. Now there's also another app page called Beautiful Apps, which is a consolidation of all the programs that uh, 1x10 design has said it's going to work with the Pogo Connect series and they give you a pretty nice view of all the apps as well as what they perform and do. So if I tap on something such as, uh, I don't know, uh, Incus for instance, it's going to give me a summary that it has, the software has pen pressure sensitivity, it has palm rejection, and it works with the iPad 1, 2, 3, and later. So it's actually a very fully functional app uh, versus something else which uh, might only work for select iPads. It might not have pressure sensitivity, for instance, supported. And there's also other things here that might uh, project the display of the iPad to a computer, annotate at notes. So these are all the things that they really recommend that you can check out. And the best thing is most of these programs here are free, so they don't really cost you money either. So they are. it is a pretty premium experience that you get uh, with this uh, software suite. Even though it's not directly out of the box, you have to set things up, takes a little bit of time, it doesn't really cost too much either. So there's another store here that you can tap on to purchase the aforementioned accessories if you're running out uh, that's provided by 101 Design, uh, such as tips as well as additional pogo pens. So that's something that they built onto the app as well. So all in all, this actually works very, very well. Um, it makes more sense than other Bluetooth styluses that we've checked out in the past, uh, just because it uh, actually has pressure sensitivity that works fairly well, even though it's not the most precise thing in the world, just because of the nature of this pen tip. And the technology here, I think, is pretty cool, since they built in all the pressure sensitivity into this physical sensor at the tip of the pen, instead of integrating it you know, onto a display or something. Um, otherwise, even if you're not using it as a pressure sensitive pen, it still works as a regular touch through this uh, metal build. So you can see that even you know, just from a general UI perspective on your iOS device, even if I'm going to my, let's say, iPod Touch here, it's still going to work and it still is a fairly responsive stylus even if you don't want that pressure sensitivity. But it is there and it does work actually pretty well. Um, and again, as long as you're not expecting the most precision in the world, this one has a very nice construction quality. It, it feels almost like a thicker marker in the hand. So if you're doing some light drawing, it does have that uh, pressure sensitivity, but you can also use it for a wide range of other applications. At this very low price point now, here in 2017, of sub $15, I definitely think that the Pogo Connect is worth it if you're looking for a pressure sensitive stylus to really get started with with your iPad. Also, as long as you're not expecting a complete Wacom tablet replacement, uh, you know, or the best performance in the world, I think that you'll be pleased with the value, um, at least here in 2017. Thanks for watching this video review here at OS Reviews. This has been the Pogo Connect Smart Bluetooth Pressure Sensitive Pen.